So a few days ago, I decided to test my HTML skills by doing the HTML assessment on LinkedIn, and I had fun doing it. I did better than I thought I was going to. I'll also link that video up above, but I decided why not go ahead and do CSS, and I'll probably end up doing JavaScript and maybe even the Angular one and whichever other one seems appropriate for the stuff that I feel that I'm familiar enough with to try to do one of these assessments. So in this video, I'm gonna do the CSS assessment on LinkedIn and see how I do with that. I haven't tried it yet. This is my first go at it. If I pass or if I fail, I'm gonna post this video. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start the assessment right now. All right, let's see. Uh, in the example below, when will the color pink be applied to the anchor element when it's active? Um, no, so I'm going to display while the link is being clicked, but before the mouse is released. Uh. Come on, really? All right, so it's not this one. The color of the link will display is pink while the link is being clicked but before it's released, that's the one. All right, before it's clicked, I think it's this one. Jeez, I'm terrible. I'm already, I'm already gonna, <laughs> I'm already gonna fail this. All right, uh, I swear I know CSS and I use it. I use Bootstrap more than I write custom CSS now at my job, but I'm pretty familiar with CSS. I'd say it's one of my strong suits. Uh, what is the difference between display none and visibility hidden? Display none hides the element from view and removes it from the normal flow of the document. Visibility hidden hides the element but maintains the space previously occupied. I think that's the, the right answer. Uh, display none hides the element but maintains the space. Uh, no, no difference. Both will hide the element on the page, but display none is, uh, I think they're trying to trick you with that one. I think it's the first one, pretty sure. Display none hides the element from view and removes it from the normal flow of the document. Visibility hidden will hide the element but maintains the space it previously occupied. I believe that's it. All right, what's the difference between line height settings? Uh, one is relative and the other one is absolute, I think. Let me see. Uh, the value of 20 pixels will set the line height to 20 pixels. The value of two will set the line height to 20% of the corresponding font size. Is that what it equates to? Is it is it percentages? Uh, no, that's not it. The value, set the line height to 20 pixels. Two is not valid, that's not true. See, that's the good thing about multiple choice. You kind of just got to find the ones that obviously aren't right and then figure out which ones are right. So let's see, I'm between one and four here. The value of 20 pixels will be set to the line height of to 20. The value of two will set the line height to twice the size of the corresponding font value. Uh, I don't believe that's true because if your font size is... So does it equate to percentages? Is that how it works? I'm guessing so because this, this isn't right because using a line height on something that's like 16 pixels font size would be way bigger. Um, so I'm gonna go with that first one. I think that's right. I just didn't know it equated to percentages, but then again, I could be wrong. Uh, which color choice is not a valid color? Uh, this one, that's easy. Valid colors have uh, hex values, RGBs, um, and there's, I think another one I'm forgetting the, just went over all this stuff, jeez. But I know for sure that this one's wrong because it doesn't have a hex in front of it. This is shorthand for this one. And then using RGB values is also correct there. So confident on that one. What is the line height property primarily used for to control the height of a line? Control the height between the space of two lines of content. I think that's it. To control the height of the character size, to control the width of the space between the characters, to control the all right, it's the first one. That one's pretty straightforward. If the width of the container is 500 pixels, what would the width of the three columns be in this layout? Uh, oh, I'm terrible at math. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and subtract that and then the two fractions. 
it's going to be a 500. So let me see. No. I want to say that's going to be it because one fraction because I'm pretty sure the way this is going to work we're going to take the 50 pixels and that'll apply it to one and then we'll have the leftover but see that's where I'm confused because I feel that that would be well that doesn't equal 500 total and that equals 500 50 and that equals 500. I'm going to go with that one just because the math seems right on that. Uh, the values for font weight property can be keywords or numbers. For each numbered value, what is the associated keyword? Oh, um, so 400 is normal. Oh, this one's going to get me. 400 is, uh, no, normal is 500. 500 is normal. Uh, no, that's not it. Oh, shoot. All right. So, lighten. I thought 500 is normal. So, maybe I'm wrong then. Normal bold. So, 400 is normal. Oh, shoot. This one's going to get me. So, I know it's not this one. But I know 700 is not normal. So, then, if... 400 is normal, then bold would be like 600 or 500. Uh, I'm going to say that's going to be an, an educated guess on that one there. Uh, <laughs> which style places an element in a fixed location within its container? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Which style places an element at a fixed location within its container? Position absolute. Uh, display flex, that's a display, display flex. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's right. I'm feeling pretty good about that one. What elements do these selectors match? Dot nav. All right, so that's class name nav, that's um, element nav, and that's ID nav. So let's see uh, class name nav and ID. Uh, Class nav, element nav, and ID nav. Yeah, that's that's correct. In this example, what color will paragraph one be? Uh, P first type of red. I think they're trying to trick me here because since uh, CSS cascades, it's going to go down the list, and if it wants to first paragraph to be the color then I mean this targets the first type of P I'm, it would make it red but then this would overwrite that pretty sure but then this would should overwrite that first child I was just using first child and last child recently um, uh. I hate how much this makes me feel like I don't know about CSS. <laughs> and like I said, I feel pretty confident that I know my CSS at least well enough to pass this assessment. I don't know if I'm going to get another badge like I did with the HTML stuff, but hopefully I just passed. That's all I'm shooting for right now. What is not true about class selectors? Only one class can be, uh, only one class value can be assigned to an element. Well, that one's not true. Class selectors are marked. With the leading period, that's true. An element can have multiple classes, that's true. More than one element can have the same class. All right, so that's that's one's pretty easy. Uh, what is the CSS selector for an A tag containing the title attribute? Uh, so. Mm. I think it's that one. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's it. Because um, that would be the class attribute. This doesn't even look valid, and that would be. I think this is all the 
titles. I for, I forget the uh, the less than greater than. It's been so long since I write custom CSS and and just that time period of not writing it so often and just using Bootstrap. Um, for the last two years that my current job has made my CSS skills diminish, but my TypeScript, Angular, and JavaScript and like full stack skills are a lot better now, but my CSS skills are kind of crappy. Uh, let me not waste time. Using nth child pseudo class, what would the, be the most efficient way to style every third item on the list, no matter how many are present? Oh, this should be easy. Uh, 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 this is the only problem here is that I don't I don't get the equations in here. Uh, I kind of know what nth child does and okay, so what would be the most efficient way to style every third item in a list no matter how many items are pres present starting with item two. So n2 plus three, or that would be n3 plus two. No, starting with the third item in a list. I got 20 seconds. Third item in a list, no matter how many items are present. Ah, oh, shoot. I'm gonna have to answer this one. Uh, that, that was, that was, yeah, I, I don't know that one. Uh, which statement about block inline element is true? Which statement about block and inline elements is true? A nav element is an example of an inline element. A header is an example of a block element. Um, by default, block elements are the same height and width as the container contained between their tags. Inline elements span the entire width of its container. I wanna say it's backwards. Span is, I think that's, that's uh, span is an example of a block. Span is actually an inline, I think, and div is a block. So this is backwards. By default, block elements span the entire width of its container. Inline elements are the same height and width as its content containing between their tags. I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Uh, look at it real quick again. I got 40 seconds. Um, which statement about block and inline elements is true? Nav element is an example of an inline. No, I, I, I think that's just, that's also backwards, I think, or it might not even be accurate. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's block elements span the entire width of the container. Inline elements are the same height and width as of the content contained between their tags. Yes, I'm going to go with that. Uh, when elements within a container overlap, Z index property can be used to indicate how those items are stacked on top of each other. Which of the statements are true? Smaller index values appear at the top of the element while larger values with on the top. No, that's wrong. Uh, larger Z index values appear on top of elements with a smaller C index value. Only positive numbers can be used. Z index must also be used with position, no, I think I think negative numbers can be used too. So those 50 seconds, all right. Uh, larger Z index values appear on top of elements with a smaller value, negative and positive numbers can be used. Z index can only be, can be used only on positioned elements. Geez, I don't know, that last one might get me. Let me see what this, smaller index values appear on top. Okay, so that's wrong. So I'm guessing this one just because I wasn't 100% sure on the third thing here, but I'm pretty sure that you can use negatives and positives. Now I'm questioning my knowledge on Z index because usually just Z index, you just, you know, if you have a crappy code base that doesn't use like good uh, Z index variables, you just keep adding numbers until you have like 9,999 Z index. I'm going to go with that one. Uh... Hey, look at that. I'm in the top 15% on my CSS. I did even better on my CSS than I did on my HTML. Go figure. And again, I was sweating bullets the whole time thinking that I wasn't gonna be able to pass this. So oddly enough, I, I underestimated my CSS skills and I earned another badge on LinkedIn. And I'm pretty happy about that.
Um, so if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me do more of these, make sure to let me know in the comments, hit that like button because it'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos on me talking about learning how to code and doing nonsense like this and walking through curriculum and assessments and different tutorials and whatnot, make sure to subscribe to my channel. All right. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.